How's it going, everybody? It's Josh, KI6NAZ. Before my last week's live stream, I went to the post office box and I pulled out a box from Andrew Sims and inside was this pager device. This is a Poxag pager that receives on 70 centimeters frequency shift key, basically digital mode called Poxag. And Poxag stands for, I gotta read this because there's a lot to it. Uh, post office code standardization advisory group. Poxag, and it's a pager transmitting service. Basically, with the facilitation of your Zoom Spot or any device that you have running Pi Star for digital modes, you can transmit pager codes that will display as numeric, or in my case, an alphanumeric display of messages. And there's a whole system set up for it, and we're going to talk about it today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. So if fun videos like this are interesting to you, consider giving me a thumbs up. It's how the YouTube algorithm works to put content like this in front of other people, potentially people that are new to amateur radio that you think might find this helpful. So if you could, give me a thumbs up. Thanks. So all things in ham radio paging starts with hampager.de, a German website where you go to set up communication to operate a transmitter on the service. And in this case, we're using my zoom spot and it's going to transmit to my little pager here you go online first thing you have to do if you're interested in this is you got to make an account and there's two things you have to do the first is you go to their support page and you create a ticket to create an account and if you have a pager already you create an account with rick r-i-c r-i-c is the numbering system for the pager that you want to communicate to if you don't have a pager yet, then you would make an account without a RIC. Hopefully that makes sense. You wait for the account to get activated and then you add a new transmitter. The transmitter is going to be your amateur radio station that is going to transmit your call sign or information based on your call sign or attached to your call sign based off of pages coming in from the ham pager network that then go to any connected receivers that you have to your hotspot. In my case, my pager right here. Now, it took me about a pot of coffee uh, to get ready <laughs> to, to work this all out. There is a bit of work you have to do. And so you're going to want to be patient. It's going to take a couple of days to get through the ticketing system on creating the account and activating your transmitter. But then once you've done that, when you have both responses back in, you're going to set up the password for your account, and then you're going to add your transmitter information to your Zoom spot. You need to turn Poxag on as a mode through Pistar in the configuration screen, and you're going to provide your auth code. If you want to be able to transmit from your Pi Star to the ham pager network, which will then circle back around and come back to your pager, you're going to want to make sure that you turn on your connection settings on the expert area of the Pi Star that allows you to add in your ham pager username and password. From there, you'll be able to issue sudo commands at the Linux level which is running on Raspbian on the Zoom spot, running on Pistar, and you can issue a command to actually send out messages through your transmitter to devices connected. Whew, that was a mouthful. So once you have your transmitter, your Zoom Spot, or whatever you have running Pi Store or Open Spot or any of the multitude of devices that support Poxag, you're going to use your hampager.de account to send a call. The call can be issued to any transmitter that is active on the hampager.de network. So you can send a message to yourself to perform like a test. At that point, if you're able to receive that test, anyone on that network can send you messages. For example, I'm KI6NAZ on the Hampager network. Now, if that was it, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's a fun little novelty. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and put it in a box somewhere and never touch it again, but it's not. There's actually much more you can do with the system that I spent a good weekend playing with. 
All right, everybody, put your nerd hats on because it's about to get a little, little geeky. Uh, what I did was I created a Python script that would download XML from hamqsl.com. And hamqsl.com is the website that gives like solar weather. They give you the solar index number, for example. I took that XML that includes the solar index, I pulled that number out, and I sent it through that sudo command using the Python script out to hampager.de, which then forwarded it to my pager. So I have now a method to send myself um, conditions, solar cycle, I'm um, sorry, solar index level, any kind of thing that I can pull through that Python script through pulling or parsing that XML, I can send it to my pager. Now the next step for that is I created what's called a cron job and that cron job runs daily or however often I'd like to and will send me the up-to-date solar index for that time period or whenever it pulls the query. But it gets even better. So I was thinking to myself, well, I'm going through a lot of work just to be able to do this. And, and you can do this. It's totally applicable. But I was like, somebody has to have already solved this. And of course they have. And it's called rubrics. Rubrics are like mm, newsletter um, subscribing, but in text message form. And there are a whole series of them. One of the big ones is DX spotting or DX cluster information. You can have DX cluster information forwarded to your pager via hampager.de, including SOTA activations. So I have condition reports, DX spots that are open, and SOTA activations all being sent to my pager now when it's within the RF propagation space of my hotspot, which is right behind me here. So you're probably thinking to yourself at this point, wow, this is really geeky and really nerdy. Why are you doing this? Well, to be honest, it's because I can, and uh, it's a bit of fun, a bit of something different in amateur radio. I think the idea of having just a standalone device that just sits there, uh, the battery lasts a really long time, and it's rechargeable, and just works, um, I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Why not play around with that a little bit? And the more I started peeling back that onion, as often happens with amateur radio, I discovered, oh, there's a level of depth here that actually becomes useful and interesting. And that's definitely these rubrics. So at the time of this recording, there isn't really a good rubric right now for the United States. They don't have a lot of information for you to subscribe to, but I am working on something. Hopefully I'll be able to get something out um, relatively soon. Remember, this is largely like a European system, this hampager.de. They have a very easy to follow system for creating your own type of rubric device that would feed something like DX spots or soda activations. And that's kind of where I'm going to put my focus, at least initially, as I use this a little bit more. This is going to take me a while, but I am working on it. So just an FYI. Of course, I could do this all with my phone, but I thought that, hey, it's interesting enough. Uh, why not let it live in that sense? And I definitely think I have a little bit more nerd cred now that I have it working. It did take me a little while to get this all working. It took me a while to debug Python, my code that I made, because I have not used Python in what feels like years, uh, literally. But it, it's working now, and so it's pretty cool. So let's talk about a couple of details to make this all work. Obviously, you're going to need the pager, which is an Alpha POC 602. Thank you again, Andrew, for sending it to me. You can program the device via its front panels, but they sell a programming dongle with USB cord that I recommend. It goes along with a software title that allows you to go in and set those RIC numbers. RIC numbers, I believe there are eight of them total, four of them are programmable, are kind of like subscriber numbers. So there would be your standard RIC to receive your specific messages if somebody wanted to send you a message to your call sign. And then there are subscriber IDs like for getting DX spots, soda activations, etc., etc. Just like a Baofeng or any amateur radio, you're going to want to program those RIC numbers specifically to what you want. And while you can do it from the front panel, it's generally easier to use the software. So I'll post the link in the description first to Alpha POC so you can check them out. Most of this is all German, um, and you can operate with US dollars and whatnot. And again, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, but you can translate the pages, and I found that all of them translate really easily through Google Translate. You can also buy pagers on eBay and AliExpress. I cannot comment to the authenticity of those pagers. I will leave you to try that out if you want to do so, or you just go with Alpha POC and you can get it that way. 
Hampager.de is also German. Their wiki documentation area is very nicely done. It is also translatable, and I found it was really easy to go through them. Now, for the transmitter side, which again is my Zoom Spot running Pistar, I did um, have to upgrade the software on my Pistar portion of the whole thing to make it work correctly. So you might want to do that right from the beginning if you're thinking about going through this. Make sure that you have the most up-to-date firmware for the system and the software that goes into that. And there's a whole host of videos that you can watch on YouTube that walk through upgrading the Zoom Spot. I should say Pistar, uh, Zoom Spot with Pistar running the software. Pistar is going to be on lots of devices, um, so just make sure it's updated. Now, a bit of note on Poxag. You can set up an SDR to receive Poxag. And there are a variety of software that will decode Poxag. Again, this is not an encrypted system. Pagers in general are not encrypted. So you could very well find yourself receiving signals, receiving Poxag transmissions that you can decode and then find information out about people that is probably not lawful for you to have. So, and let me be specific, it is technically not legal for anyone to capture Poxag transmissions and record them for purposes. Actually, it doesn't matter what purposes. You're just not supposed to copy them. So keep that in mind. This is not something that I'm using to copy any information, nor should you. I'm purely trying to set up my own Poxag station in which I can receive messages via the pager. There is no privacy in this mode. Just like anything in amateur radio, there is no um, cryptos involved or encoding of messages other than the Poxag digital format, which is very easy to decode. So keep that in mind. This is not a secured form of transmission. And, and generally, that's all I have to say about Poxag at this time. I found the walking through memory lane of having a pager again, a quaint little thing. I had a pager in the 90s when I was in high school and middle school, back before cell phones were everywhere. And so the fact that I can have ham radio information sent to a pager that kind of just lives in my shack, I think is, is pretty neat. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave that up for you to decide. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. I really do appreciate that this is going to be a little uh, complicated to get started with. So if you are having trouble, post in the comments below and consider joining our Discord to ask questions. There are a number of people there that know how to get Poxag working on the Pistar software, which was kind of like my big hurdle. The pager side of it was very easy. The Python side, that's a bit uh, more of its own thing, its own difficulty. So if you're interested in that code, you can send me a message. Uh, but I would first focus on getting the messages going to your pager through the hampager.de website and then look into rubrics because most of what you're looking for probably already exists in rubric form. All right, <laughs> that'll do it, guys. I will talk to you soon. I stream every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And again, if you have any questions on this or anything else amateur radio related, consider joining our communities on Facebook and Discord. Extremely active, both with uh, new people starting out. They're always welcome. Your questions, it doesn't matter what they are. are always, we try to answer everything. And we've got a lot of really, really smart technical people there as well. And it makes things a lot of fun when you have a community backing you up, particularly online. All right, that's going to do it. I'll talk to you later. See ya.